I started playing banjo when I was about 12. I, I played mandolin. I started on mandolin at about five and then moved to, uh, got interested in the banjo and uh, got a banjo for Christmas when I was 12. Got my dad's old banjo. And so then I started playing that pretty seriously. And the deal was I could quit piano lessons if I was serious about the banjo, so. Traditional bluegrass is a really good foundation for any kind of music that people want to play because it's, uh, played by ear and it's improvisational and yet on some level it's fairly simple and so I think it's a, it's a good starter music and can be a lifelong music for sure. Bluegrass is, is doesn't need to pr be preserved. I think bluegrass is around for good with YouTube and the internet and recordings and so I, I think it's great that people explore different things. I think the traditional stuff is great. I think the progressive stuff is it's fun, and it's all, it's all just good music. I, lo I love the blues, I love improvisational music, so uh, it's a nice opportunity to stretch out and see what's gonna happen. I like that feeling, not knowing what's gonna happen. I would say one of the most memorable experiences I've had is playing on uh, the Prairie and Companion back in, I think it was 2000 uh, or 2001, somewhere in there. Um, that was a, nice, a neat experience, very different. We did some cool stuff with Above the Town. I played uh, uh, a couple shows with uh, the uh, Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra, where we did like their Pops concert, and we, we were like the local flavor. And we got to play, uh, Marvin Hamlish was there one time directing. That was an experience. <laughs> Well, my goal for the band would just be to uh, be able to play uh, venues with 
a variety of venues with good sound and good atmosphere, good venues that, that are not necessarily a listening audience all the time, but a, a, or a sit-down audience, but just an audience that's into it, yeah. um, which is what we do, I think. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. I don't necessarily want to tour the whole world, but I, I'm not opposed to that. <laughs> here with Ernie Rusabartis, the violinist from the Empire of Chickens. Hello, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm, I'm doing well. Thank you. L let's get started. Um, so what is the main difference between bluegrass and classical music for you? Yeah, I mean, uh, as much as there's some differences between bluegrass or classical music, there's actually quite a quite a bit of similarities. Um, a lot of the tunes uh, in bluegrass and pieces in classical music are all in the key of A. And in inferior. Well, I mean, A major, I guess, isn't the best key, but uh, I mean, there's D minor. But on the other hand, in bluegrass music, you'll never see something like C minor or, or G flat. Probably just can't play it. So how often do you practice? Um, as a bluegrass fiddler, I, I never really need to practice 
I usually just show up and play. Um, I, I actually don't really know any of the tunes mm. at all. Um, I find that if you have enough whiskey, everything's in the correct key. Mm. Big, big drinker then. All right, alcoholic. And who do you listen to? Um, I, I listen to uh, the Punch Brothers here and there. The Wood Brothers? Um, no, it's 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 not not that band. It's it's Punch Brothers, a, a classical band, if you would. Yeah, most like they do some classical stuff. Some Debussy and like you know, I play. I think they played some other stuff. Debussy. It's Debussy. The good stuff. Who who would who would your favorite violinist be? Um, well, other than myself, uh, I think Michael Cleveland is a. Uh, I think he's great. Really good at what he does. Yeah, well, I mean, there's there's plenty of YouTube videos. Um, like if if you're on on there looking for you know Berlin Phil videos, I'm sure you could just quick go Michael Cleveland, like the Cleveland Symphony. Pass. Um, so when did you start playing the vi fiddle? Thank you. Yeah, it's a fiddle, but uh, um. Well, let's see. I've been in Chicken Wire for about a year. And... Empire of Chickens? Ch Chicken Wire Empire, but um, I think it's been about two and a half years now. So, who is your favorite fiddler? Well, uh, you know, I, I started fiddling and I realized that there were so many other people that were doing the exact same thing. Um, so, I mean, a lot of fiddlers that I was listening to was, you know, Michael Cleveland, uh, Mark O'Connor, Kenny Baker. Um, there were even, like, uh, people that don't normally play fiddle. I mean, I guess Chris Thiele even uh, plays fiddle, which is pretty crazy. Um, are you on your phone? Sorry, though that was just boring. I don't I don't care. Well, I mean you asked me a question and uh I, I was trying to respond, but it's let's let's just move on. Yeah. Sh yeah, let's move forward. So from the look of the video that I was just watching of you, you've been playing for a couple of months, right? What video? From the Riverside Theater. Are you no, no, so cosa fare con quanti tempi? Basta. Come on. Basta. Basta. Come on. Basta. Don't be a baby. <sighs> Piss off. This has been Ernest Brusabardis IV interviewing Ernie Brusabardis, violinist of Empire of Chickens. I didn't really fancy socks. The night! Oh! 
I'm Greg, and I play guitar. <laughs> uh, I've been with the boys here about 10 months now, and uh, got kind of the call up. He called me up to play a gig down in Woodstock or somewhere down in Illinois. And we met on the street out there for, for a half hour beforehand and, and learned a handful of songs, jumped on stage, went for it, and it's kind of been a whirlwind tour after that. I'm a fourth generation musician. My father was a guitar player, mandolin player. We played together in bands for a long time. And uh, his dad was a marine band tuba player. And it goes up the line from there. And it's just kind of been passed on. I pass it on to my daughters now. And hopefully they really grasp it and run with it too, because it's something that brings me, you know, a lot of joy in my life. And it's already bringing joy to my oldest daughter. And hopefully the rest just gravitate towards that too. Growing up, I played in orchestras and started off on violin, then viola, and then went to, uh, to college for cello. Later on, I started playing guitar when I was 13 years old. Played a lot of heavy metal back in the day. Had my fun stringing my hair around in that. And then, uh, you know, my, my father's record collection, though, is what really inspired me, from Tony Bennett to David Grisman, and I mean, you name it, listening to those, those amazing musicians my whole life, and then hearing him play those songs inspired me to, to kind of get going in that. And then about 17 years ago, me and my dad were down in the basement playing guitar together, playing some dog music, and a bunch of musicians started showing up, and then I kind of got into my first bluegrass band after that. I would definitely, if I could play guitar in one band that ever existed out there, I'd be with the Grateful Dead. To, to embody... <laughs> Are they on cue, system? have to have these recreational tasks, we like to multitask. Watch me throw my first strike of the night. <laughs> the most influential guitarist in my life has been my dad. And whether I like it or not, the three lessons that he gave me when I was 13 years old set me on a course to, to where I am now playing with this wonderful group of guys and making music and smiling on a daily basis, and thanks, Dad. <laughs> That's a winner. Don't throw away letters that I sent you Hear me out, just hear me out It's been three years since I last held you But it feels like yesterday Houston, 
Honey, you can't run You took my car So I started walking On down the highway In the setting sun And then I can pull On the highway lonely I saw some headlights Shining down the road Then hitched a ride On down to Texas With a bottle of whiskey And a loaded gun If I can't have you, nobody can I will make you be my woman I'll make you see that I'm your man Graveyard. I thought about the bad things I'd done. Said I was sorry, didn't really mean it. And she laughed out loud and sang to me. The time has come for me to kill you. You should. 
should have just stayed away I'll never be your woman I'll just be dancing on your Source Public House in Menasha. Uh, big, big show. Road to Blue Ox. La road to Blue Ox. The Road to Blue Ox. Huge, big, uh, lots of pressure. pants are those that you're putting on? These are some moist jeans. I, uh, I forgot to throw them in the dryer, so we tried to air dry today, and they're, they're pretty wet. So, whew, and they're cold. <laughs> to the whole team. It's, it's not just one player. It's everyone. And then there's Greg, the one player. I think I tend to overthink it a lot when playing and like I'm in search of something that's gonna teach me and I tend to overlook the stuff that's right there. Uh, I'm like searching for something like, oh, what can I play? Like even coming to a jam, it's like, I try not to pick stuff that is familiar to any bands that I play with, but more like, what are we gonna be able to connect with? Or what is like something that's fun to sing that other people can jump in on harmonies? Or, sure that they're gonna know. Um, because trying to think about putting myself into the jam too much, I think you lose the, the community of the jam instead of looking at it like this is an opportunity for all of us to connect yeah. as musicians that share common ground. Did you ever go to those ones up at Schweiz? Schweiz, yeah, that's You know, when you were a little kid, what, when, well, how old were you? I was like 17 when I first started going there. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and yeah, that was just the thrill of A, being in a bar right. and being with a bunch of guys I wanted to learn from. Sure. <laughs> So what do you think about, I mean, is that, is that kind of a skillet where, you know, you got everybody throwing ingredients in and 
turning up the heat? Is that the kind of an environment that's really, you know, that you see is, is you know, the best sort of uh, environment for youngsters to, you know, to learn that kind of thing in? Yeah, I think just that, the, j the weekly jam, like right. the important meeting of the community. Right. Uh, and then also the Bluegrass Festival. Okay. Which yeah. I think is more of a family-friendly environment to expose youngsters to things. I mean, like, we've got a lot of this stuff yeah. going on around here, Ryan. What's happening? Yeah. You know, I mean, what's, there's a lot of people that are interested in, in getting together and playing this kind of music, you know? And not all of them are, are interested in, you know, in getting out and hitting the road like, like you are. What, what do you think that's all about? I think that's that's the beauty of this music where it is in reach for people to be able to take that out of their living room or their bedroom and, and share what they've learned and what they've discovered with their friends. Uh -huh. um, and you know, that's the tradition is, that's as old as the music itself. Kind of like being on the front porch. Yeah, your own, but it's your own personal interpretation of, of the music. Yeah. And it's it's so widely accepted of like, hey, this is how I play this song. And everyone else is like, cool, here's here's how I hear it. And right. You wear the foolish bed and the bed's a heart. Spend down deep, break the ground to the yard. Ain't gonna shake. between your study of yoga and, and, and the music that you perform or play? Definitely. What, what's that about? Um, I think just the yogic philosophy of self-study in general. Um, being in tune with the path that you're on. And really celebrating, um, you know, that form of meditation. Uh -huh. I, it, I, generally thought of meditation as sitting in a cross-legged position with your eyes closed and breathing and um, you know chanting mantras but it can be so much more than that and the more I studied it the more I found that um, when I'm in that headspace of playing music and everything else around you dissolves and you're so very present in that moment and in that song that well that's a that's a huge form of meditation for me. You know, especially playing fast bluegrass, it gets really hard when you stop breathing. And and to be able to maintain that sense of relaxation and breathing in and out and listening to the music and breathing with the music makes playing at faster tempos a little more reachable. Um, and um, so I kind of found that path out of necessity of playing night after night and and like I'm tired or my hands are cramping up and um, how can I observe what's happening in my body a little more closely mm -hmm. and figure out the foods that I'm eating or the things that I'm drinking, how they're affecting my sure. performance overall. Patience is worn down thin I can't watch you go through this again I struggled and I tried Gotten down to my last dime I'm tired and broke but I'm not gonna let them win Well, they've used me up and tossed me to the side Left me black and blue and taking all of my pride I'm drowning in my dead near up water without a vest And my ship's gone down and I'm swimming for my life Hold me up, won't you rescue me? Toss me upon, hungry and I need The dark clouds sweeping across the plain The lightning strikes, you feel the thunder and the rain.
Well, I made my bed and now I have to lie On a bed of coals with the devil by my side He can't take from me what I need Or kick and scream and maybe bleed He may think he's one but he'll never get the best of me Throw me a rope, won't you rescue me? Toss me a bone, hungry and I need to eat. The dark clouds sweeping across the plains, the wind it howls with blinding pain. When the lightning strikes, you feel the thunder and the rain. It's a long way to the ground Hanging on with all my mind I may live or I may die Gonna climb this mountain Cause you know that I'll be found Throw me a rope Won't you rescue me Toss me a bone Hungry and I need to eat The dark clouds sweeping across the plain in pain when the light strikes you feel the thunder and the rain when the light strikes you feel the thunder and the rain Oh, geez, we're all full in there. 
Suicide knob is crucial. Crucial. Uh, so my my dad was a horn player. He played saxophone, uh, and he. I grew up listening to like mostly like James Brown and a lot of James Brown and Maceo Parker and uh, you know like. Stevie Wonder was another one. Tower of Power, he was he was big into uh, probably like in the 80s and stuff. So I, I grew up listening to horn music, and I was an electric bass player for for years, um, playing playing funk and and you know rock and roll and stuff. And then I, I kind of got into jam bands and through the ropes discovered bluegrass. And uh, actually, actually Og introduced me to bluegrass. He's the one who got me into it big time. I, I probably wouldn't be playing bluegrass if I didn't meet Ryan Ogden, that's for sure. When I was in high school, I, I met Ryan, and I used to um, used to cut class around lunch, and I'd go over to his house because he was uh, 20, 21, and I was 17, going on 18. And I'd go over to his house, and we would just listen to a bunch of music and hang out. And I remember his room was covered in plants; just there was like walking into a jungle, and uh, plants and a bunch of his artwork that he had done. And I just remember thinking, this is. Absolutely the coolest thing ever. This is what I want I want to do. I'm the only original member in the band at this point. Um, it started with all different guys. We had a harmonica player, a different guitar player. We had a percussionist who kind of played a little bit of drums. And, um, and then Ryan was still playing with steel and strings and he would come and sit in with us, you know, whenever he could. And it just kind of happened. He just kind of ended up playing with us more and more, and then we started playing all the time. And then, you know, we were all playing in different bands too, so there was, you know, all that, and it was just kind of a, a balance of, of picking up shows whenever we could, and then, you know, doing the doing the best that we could. I think Wisconsin has a really interesting bluegrass scene um, because there's a lot of a lot of bluegrass festivals. I mean, there's a ton of bluegrass festivals. There's a major bluegrass festival uh, going on, and bands come through all the time. Um, I think that 
the guys in Chicken Wire, like we're lucky to have Ryan Ogburn, to have John Pike and Ernest Rizabardis and Greg Brundage, and I'm lucky to be part of it. I think that the, the caliber of those guys as individual pickers, to find them around Milwaukee and, and to, to come together is amazing. I think that's kind of a, a special thing because there aren't th those kinds of bluegrass pickers around. This is Chicken Wire Empire. This is who we are and what we play and how we sound. And now you know what we look like. To the land of fire, you're going to meet your maker. Sun only town Where well, there ain't no way that I'll be sticking around Saddled up my steed and I hit the trail When I look back, sheriff's on my tail Three shots in the setting sun Holding my side on the moonshine run you're going to meet your maker, you're going to the undertaker, pass through the pie to the land of fire, you're going to meet your maker, ha! Thanks for spending some time with us. 
We'll see you down the road. Cheers. Together. Together. Together, once every ten years. Just you two? If you count this one. Every other second <laughs> Wednesday.
that concludes our film. Let's have a Marvin up.